Thank you. Uh, well, thanks for having me. And um, just just to sort of get it out of the way up front, how many of you guys have ever listened to The Spy? Super. How many of you guys have ever, or I guess maybe never, heard of The Spy? Anybody not know what The Spy is? Just the, just, I'm gonna point her out over here, just these two right here, no. Um, <laughs> So uh, the Spy FM is an online radio station and we uh, partner with KOSU and so you can hear us on the web and on the FM dial, which is pretty unique for the, uh, the radio world for us to not live on an FM dial but still get to broadcast on, on an FM dial. So um, here's our social media handles. Please feel free to tag us in any of the, the posts that we have today. Um, so the Spy originally started in Stillwater. And uh, this is actually a photo from 2000. And Ferris and I, this obviously that's me, the, the short guy there in the front. But this is Ferris. If any of you guys know Ferris today, this is, he looks really young in this photo. Um, he was just a young pup. He was about 30 years old in this photo. And Ferris started his radio career in Dallas. Uh, he came to Oklahoma City when 95X was on the FM dial, if you guys ever listened to that back in the day. And then when the spy became what the spy is today, um, KSPI in Stillwater actually recruited him away from 95X for him to sort of run and manage um, the spy in Stillwater. And so the spy in Stillwater uh, existed for you know, several years and uh, was eventually killed off in 2000 by the owners because they thought they could make more money by switching the format to almost like a KISS FM. Uh, really super sad day when that happened. Um, this, this radio station was truly unique and if you ever listen to The Spy today, it is very reminiscent of what the original Spy was. The original Spy was much looser. They played songs that were 14 minutes long. They played all kinds of different music. Uh, so it's much tighter as far as you know, the, the selection of music today. But uh, really great. So you can see sort of the iterations of what the spy has been over the last couple of years. Started out in Stillwater at 93.7, then after it died in Stillwater, Ferris actually brought the format. He obtained rights to the name The Spy for uh, a radio station, brought it to Oklahoma City, uh, and in 2002 he started a, a new spy in, uh, in Oklahoma City um, at 105.3. That format lasted for a couple of years, and again, management killed it. And so then in 2009, Ferris attempted to purchase 105.3. And in fact, you can see here, there's a couple of news articles. One that was celebrating the return of the Spy Radio in 2009 to the airwaves, because Ferris brought this back. He, was, he himself was going to purchase a frequency, 105.3. This is almost unheard of in modern radio, especially for one person and not a corporate behemoth to purchase a format or purchase a, uh, a frequency. So that deal fell through one year later in 2010, December of 2010, the deal fell through and Ferris lost his frequency, 105.3. They actually put a, um, a Hispanic, a Spanish language ESPN format on, on that frequency and then it eventually was sold off and so we, we never got the spy on the FM dial for perpetuity. So in de December 2010, Ferris has to decide, do we take the spy completely digital? And you can imagine seven years ago what it was like in the digital radio realm. Um, you know, Pandora had their IPO in 2011 and so you know, really, we're, we're before internet radio was even really a thing. People didn't really listen to internet radio. There was no true satellite radio. Sirius and XM were two separate entities in this, in this time frame. And so um, this was a big challenge for him because he would either have to go find a new frequency to try to purchase or he steps into truly uncharted territory, especially in Oklahoma. So does he take it online? Well, looking back now, we can see that he probably made a really great choice because in all of these um, statistics, this one comes from a very recent um, poll that 
a traditional radio outlet did as far as uh, listenership goes. And then the, the rest of these come from another source, which I'll talk about here in a moment. But most people today listen to the FM dial in their car. Does anybody here listen to like the radio outside of their house? I'm sorry, outside of their car, not outside of their house, outside of their car? Just a couple, some, okay. Um, this is interesting to me. Over the last you know, five, six years, I can foresee a day when I won't need to listen to the radio because it's all on my phone. It's all satellite. It's all online. It's all digital. Radio is kind of old. Online music is where it's at. All right. More statistics. The growth of online radio listening over the last couple of years really, really done a nice uptick, which is fabulous for us because this is where we live. You know, it's nice that we have our FM frequency at KOSU, 91.7, Oklahoma City, 105, or 107.5 in Tulsa, 88.3 in Stillwater, and 94.9 in, in Ponca City. But this is really where we live. Even our parents, I don't think there's anybody 55 plus in here. Even our parents, 25% of our parents are now listening to online radio. Hours and minutes spent listening, this is huge. 12 minutes. I'm sorry, 12 hours and eight minutes in 2016. When you break it down, you know, it's not a whole lot every single day, but the nice trend here, it's doubling about every eight years, which is fabulous for us. A couple more statistics here. Have you ever listened to online radio by phone in your car? So plugging it in or connecting to Bluetooth. This is how I listen to this by, Bluetooth in my car. And I think this is one of the most profound ones. Today, a third of people no longer have a radio in their house. I don't. I have an Alexa that I can listen to the spy on, but I have no radios in my home. So I think this trend you're going to see more and more, especially as digital natives become older and they become you know, parents and, and heads of household and things like that, I think that we're going to continue to see this trend grow. Who listens to online radio? Age 25 to 54, 61% of these people have listened to online radio in the last month. FM radio will never go away. In fact, NPR, they just released, they had their biggest quarter, the best quarter that they've had in a long time. NPR, FM, traditional radio, really doing great. It's never going to go away. Morning shows, morning drive, the entertainment value there, never going to go away. However, when you can start now to get on-demand content. You can start now to have people curate stuff that the rotation isn't just so tight where you're hearing the same song every hour or every other hour. I think it's going to continue to grow. How do we stack up? This is really who our competition is. We don't really see like the cat or kiss or these radio stations as our competition. This is where we live. This is who we compete against. And so you can see Traditional radio, there are so many commercials. They spend almost a quarter of every hour running commercials. They're called stop sets. And it's just stacks and stacks and stacks of commercials. We don't do that. Their rotations are so tight. They play the same song every hour, every other hour. We have 30,000 songs in our music library. There are times when you'll go an entire week and hear a song one time. And it's a good song. It's a popular song. When you look at Pandora, when you look at Sirius XM, you have to have subscriptions, or with Pandora's case, you still have to have commercials. So it's a subscription base. You can listen to The Spy 24 hours a day, completely free. And the other big thing about us, and this is really where we have differentiated ourselves, is our local programming. You know, we have what's called Oklahoma Rock Show, runs Thursday night from 7 to 9 p.m. It's two hours long, and we play nothing but local artists. In our music rotation, probably a quarter of every hour is a local musician, local songs being played on our, on our, on our radio. And, and this includes even from 7 p.m. until 5 a.m. when we're broadcasting on KOSU as well. Also, when you look at Spotify, who's curating these playlists? Like, is it some 15-year-old kid in Alabama? I don't know. 
I can tell you from my experience that Ferris and his music curation, amazing. The guy knows more about obscure bands and bands that had a hit back in 1989 and they've never had another one again. He'll hear it on the radio. He'll be like, oh yeah, that was off this album. And it was in either 88 or 89. I'm like, how the hell do you know that? He's just a music library. So what does all this mean for the spy? We're talking about being digital in a traditional world. And so we have to think differently than traditional radio stations. You know, they can just have their advertisers pay for remotes. They can, you know, spend money on things in, in different ways than we can. Because with us being so, we live in, in this world right here where, you know, money is spent digitally. Um, our focus is local and we are not advertiser driven. And so we really have to think in, in different ways. And so really, we live on Instagram, we live on Facebook, we live on Twitter. We have to teach people how they can listen to our radio station. It's not just turning on the dial and flipping around until they find something cool. They have to seek us out. They have to find us, right? And so we have to educate them on how to do that. We gotta be social. We have to be social. Um, right now, we're, we're running a couple different promotions, and I'll talk about each of these here in a moment, but everything that we do is digital. We don't have a newspaper ad. We don't have a magazine ad. We can't afford a billboard. We can't do any of that. We live solely on social media. We promote new music before you're gonna hear it anywhere else. Guaranteed. I promise you that. We curate music in a very particular way where we want you to know, like, holy cow, this is brand new stuff. This is good stuff. Who's ever heard of Currency? Did you know that you know, Father John Misty had a new album out? You may have seen him on uh, Saturday Night Live. All this stuff, Depeche Mode, brand new album. They've been you know, in the music industry for 37 years. We're playing a bunch of their new stuff. We do collaborate with traditional media partners. We have a really nice collaboration right now with Territory Magazine. And so um, you're gonna see some ads coming out about the spy in Territory. Uh, we, through our collaboration with KOSU, we have some Gazette ads coming out in the future. Um, we have a, 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 a thing coming out in um, Oklahoma Today Magazine. Brian Winkler at Robot House Creative is, he's a big fan, honestly. He loves the spy. He and Ferris have known each other for a long time. Winkler's great, and his team is fabulous. Won a bunch of awards at the Addies recently. I'll tell you about what he's doing for us here in just a moment. V-Dub Sessions, one of my favorites. If you've never seen a V-Dub Session, vdubsession.com. They have a YouTube channel. They have hundreds of videos. What we do is we bring in musicians. We stick them in a 1978 VW bus. We drive them around downtown Oklahoma City, and Nathan Poppy, some of you guys might know him, Nathan Poppy films these videos. Nobody else in the country is doing stuff like this. We support local organizations, local events. We came and got you guys. You competed against VI. Didn't you win? Yes. Yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, took you guys over to the escape. Um, Vastai, she's a, uh, Cami Stinson is a professor at ACM at UCO. We're supporting her music career, bringing her in, doing interviews in studio with her. We're finding national things to get uh, involved in as well. So the International Clash Day back in February, we actually collaborated, it was about 13 or 14 uh, radio stations all across the country and Ferris for one whole night from 9 p.m. until midnight played nothing but Clash for three hours. Kind of cool. We support local musicians. We've got a brand new music series coming up called City Sessions OKC. We're bringing in local singer-songwriters and we're doing, you, may, you guys might remember um, storytellers, VH1 storytellers. They get up there, they play their music and then they talk about their music. They tell about their inspiration. We're doing that. We're, we're humanizing this music. It's not just them up there playing acoustics and covers and all that. We wanna know about them. We wanna talk about them as musicians. It's not profit driven, it's music driven. 
we also collaborate with some cool people, like Hideaway Radio. Uh, some of you guys might remember Rob Christinger. He was at Bumbershoot. Rob is now the uh, marketing and PR director at Hideaway Pizza. Rob came to us with an idea when he took that job, and he said, our, our restaurants are playing everything from you know, country music in Yukon, Oklahoma, to hip hop, to classic rock, and they have 17 locations now. So he's like, how, he was thinking to himself, how can I make this cohesive and on brand? So he came to us and he said, could you guys create a radio station for Hideaway Pizza? And we said, yeah, let's do it. So we have Spy Music playing in 17 locations in every Hideaway Pizza in the state and in Arkansas. Plus, we create sweepers and bumpers and things like that for them where they're promoting their own events, their own specials, things like that. And so it's truly Hideaway Radio, which I dare any radio station in the state or maybe even the country to try to pull something like that off. It would never happen. Corporate would never allow it to happen. And so by us living in a digital world and being an independent radio station, we have the ability to pivot. We have the ability to you know, work independently. We have the ability to, to, to do cool stuff like this that nobody else can do. And we're refreshing our brand. So this, the eyes, right? This, this logo that's been around since 2009 is going away. Now, I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't show you. We're releasing the new brand on, on March 28th, this month. So, what is that, 12 days. Um, new t-shirts, new koozies, new stickers, a new wrap on the bus. We're very excited about it. And who did it? It was Brian Winkler, Robot House. Whenever I took this job about a year ago, I went to Brian and I said, the spy is great. The spy is almost becoming an institution in Oklahoma, but I feel like the spy has started to slip a little bit. People aren't talking about us. People aren't you know, seeking us out for promotions, for uh, you know, collaborations on cool stuff. What, what's the first step? What do you think, as a longtime listener, as a friend of Ferris, as a creative yourself in this city, what do you think we need to do? And he said, first thing, you got to refresh the brand. He said, it's great. Everybody recognizes it. But we're living in a traditional media world, rectangular, banners, posters, things like that, when really where we need to be living is in a digital world where it's square based. It can fit in a, you know, an Instagram circle. And so he's been working with us since August of last year, and we're now going to release a brand new brand on March 28th. Very excited. Very excited. Um, we, we think that there's so much more that could be done in this city. There's so many cool things, so many great creative people. We seek out collaboration on a weekly basis. The, our City Sessions idea, our singer-songwriter idea, that was a local musician who came to us and said, hey, I've, I've got this idea, but I can't do it. I can't execute it. I'm just one musician. And so we said, we love it. So we went out and we found partners. We got sponsors. We found a venue. We set all this stuff up. Now it's going to be great. It's going to be super cool, and we want to do more stuff like this. So by all means, if you have ideas, if you know people, um, we'd love to collaborate. Thanks, guys. Do you have any questions? Yes? What are you doing to attract our visitors that are coming to our city to know that you exist and how to listen and get engaged from a visitor standpoint? That is really hard. Man. Um, so I will say that as of yet, we're probably not doing anything other than being on social media and trying to be active. Um, because we are a local digital radio station um, and because we're only on the FM dial from 7 p.m. until 5 a.m., uh, I think that's a, that's a real challenge for us because most of our listener base is either local or they are worldwide who have sought us out and found us because of our format. Um, and so I think that, that that's definitely something that we could focus on, and I'd love to hear your ideas on how we could do that. I would collaborate. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yes? Um, speaking of how people find you, is there a certain channel or website that you guys 
website or social media that tends to bring in the most concern and why? Um, you know, as our, our Twitter following is by far our biggest social media following. But I think as far as people being able to find us, I think Facebook is probably the easier uh, route for us to go, uh, just simply because we can target so much better on that format. Uh, and so any promotions we do, you know, we're, we're targeting specific demographics, specific locations, things like that. Um, truly, uh, probably our, our biggest, if you look at our Google Analytics, probably just coming from direct um, URL or from Google. Um, but Facebook, as far as the social media goes, is probably our, our, our biggest asset. Other questions? Yes? Yeah, so Tyson used to have uh, a show on The Spy back when it was still on 105.3, um, and he's still actually a, a part of what we're doing. Um, he's really focused on his music and his art here lately, um, and he's got a new art show coming up, uh, I think in Kentucky I saw. I got an invitation from him uh, for that. Uh, but we're trying to bring Tyson back on the airwaves. Um, we're actually looking at a new show with him. No promises, but hopefully soon, Tyson will be back. Do you guys know who Tyson is? Chainsaw Kittens? Um, so hopefully soon he'll be back on the airways with us, for sure. We have over 20 specialty shows that run from basically from 7 p.m. until midnight. Uh, I mentioned the Oklahoma Rock Show. Uh, we have on Monday nights, we have a show that pairs wine with music and talks about how music affects the taste of wine. Uh, we have a dating show on Sunday nights. Uh, with Ryan Drake, local comedian, if you guys know who he is. Uh, we have an all vinyl show on Tuesday nights where um, you know, we play just all vinyl music. Um, and then we have, you know, like a roots music show. Um, we have, uh, trying to think, days. We have a, a post punk show. We have all kinds of stuff that, again, I guarantee you no corporate radio station in America is playing this sort of stuff. And it's good. It's really good. It's unfortunate because there's all this great music out there and corporate radio reduces it to lowest common denominator because they have to focus in on, you know, making sure listeners are tuning in every quarter hour and making their profits and getting advertisers and things like that. And we just don't operate that way. We're music centric. Anything else? You said you're releasing the new look on the 28th. Yep. Everywhere. <laughs> so uh, obviously, be, we'll be posting on all the social media platforms. We're releasing a brand new website that we're working on right now. Uh, the bus will be out and about that night. Um, at, we've actually, our first city session event is at KOSU that night, and so we'll have the bus out there with the new um, stickers on it. Um, and so you'll, you'll see us all over the place from that point forward. We've got a, an ad in the new territory. We've got an ad coming up in the OK Today magazine um, that Again, we didn't really do anything with that. Our partners offered that to us, and uh, so we took advantage of that. So we'll be all over. And Hideaway too, possibly. For sure, Hideaway. And you'll, you'll start to see some branding from Hideaway as far as what Hideaway Radio is. It's Hideaway Radio powered by the spy. And so it's in all those locations. Please definitely, if you go to Hideaway, uh, take a listen, and you should hear some spy music, and you'll hear Ferris's voice. Sure. Yes. Can you try to expand that concept to other Sure. I don't think that we have any, any sort of goals to like franchise out the spy, um, but because we do live digitally, we definitely have ambitions to get listeners in other locations other than Oklahoma City. You know, pretty much right now where we live is Oklahoma City. Tulsa, Dallas, and Denver is randomly a, a really great city for us as well. Um, and so, you know, what we really want to do is as we grow our presence and our expand our marketing, what we want to do is just sort of expand organically into other markets, into other states. We want people to recognize that this is something that just doesn't exist anywhere else. Most of the other stations that existed like us have failed mainly because corporate will kill it and the people who try to do it on their own financially can't make it profitable. And so they just can't keep the doors open. 
Um, so that's, that's sort of our goals as far as that goes. And then r really what we want to do is we want to become the go-to place in Oklahoma for great music. So any show at Criterion that's happening, any show at Canes that's happening, any show at Tower that fits our format, we want the bus to be there. We want to be promoting it. We want the, those musicians to come in studio and, and cut a, a live track with us. We want that sort of stuff. We want to become that, oh, like the Modest Mouse show, it has to be, has to be the spy. So, yeah.